On today's episode of Random Land, we're back at Walt Disney World, checking out one of the greatest theme parks of all time, Epcot, where we delve into a little bit of history, some unique characters, and have an adventure around the world before we switch gears and head off to Hollywood, where we drop in on some familiar faces and a haunted hotel like no other, at least in America anyways. Good morning from Walt Disney World. The most magical place to start your day. Disney World is huge, which is why it has its own basically highways back here and signage. And there are four massive theme parks to choose from. And today we're gonna have a real ball because we're headed in to Epcot. Dude, look at that new logo there over the parking ticket booth. Dude, how much better is the branding now that they've returned to the old school logo? Almost makes you feel better about having to park way out in the Dory parking lot when you get here a little too late to be really early. Well, that's okay. I like walking at first. Oh, look at that monorail. You know, I remember when the parking lot was named after things like Discover, Create, Imagine. So strange that all the parking lots are now named for Disney characters. Especially considering that when Epcot first opened in 1982, they had a no Mickey rule. It was Disney's first non-Magic Kingdom, non-Castle Park. And they wanted it to stand out and be distinct from the old Magic Kingdom with no classic Disney characters. Of course, that all changed when Michael Eisner came along and said, why on earth would we do that? And then Mickey Mouse made his first appearance here with Eisner in April 1985. But his first big public appearance here on May 27th, 1985, alongside President Ronald Reagan. It doesn't get much more 80s than that, and it doesn't get much more 80s than the design of the front of Epcot, the part that used to be known as Future World, but has, of course, of late been rebranded with the whole clean-cut refresh of Epcot, but you know what? The spirit of the 80s in design terms still remains. And as much as they've changed Epcot to update it lately, They've done just as much to bring back some of the charm of its 1980s futurism, like restoring the entrance fountain here that had been missing for decades and removing the weird Leave a Legacy Epcot Cemetery from the front of the park. It's beautiful and very relaxing. Maybe a little too relaxing. Look at this, there's Minnie Mouse right in the front of the park. It's been sort of the fun part of coming to Epcot for the last decade or so. Is coming and seeing the constant evolution past Spaceship Earth over here. Evolution that's still very much ongoing. Because back behind this wonderful, mystical, spherical dark ride, Lies wall after wonderful, colorful construction wall. So far though, for every wall that's been removed, something new and clean cut and fun has appeared. None of which, in my opinion, have been more fun than the new Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind Roller Coaster. Written this quite a few times now, some for recent episodes. And I can't get enough of it. No offense to uh, Ellen DeGeneres and the old Ellen's Energy Ride, but uh, even though I'm not even a huge Marvel guy, this this is better. Now some people get grumpy because like in the 80s, this was the energy pavilion to teach you all about energy. And then you had things like the Wonders of Life pavilion, which taught you about the Wonders of Life. Then originally you had the Horizons ride, which taught you all about the promise and progress of the future. Replaced by Mission Space, which is still somewhat educational. After all, NASA was a consultant on this ride, and for all we know, it's inspired countless of future Mars explorers and colonizers. All while subtly warning us about the dangers of Death Stars. <laughs> Another Death Star! And another Death Star! This one's firing a beam! Oh my gosh, look at the seats! Death Star! Death Star! Death Star! Hidden Death Stars everywhere! Some say they would foretell the prophecy of Bob Iger buying Star Wars for Disney. By the way, when we colonize Mars, I think I want to live right here. Looks nice and quiet. Anyway, sorry, I tend to get a little distracted in Epcot. My point was that all the pavilions were originally educational and the whole thing was to get kids inspired in science and technology. It's sort of like a permanent World's Fair and back then World's Fairs were very educational. So some old school fans get kind of upset that they've moved in a more Disney character friendly direction instead of education. But that kind of completely ignores the fact that we don't need a ride to teach us how energy is made or to teach us what a photon is. We can just look that up on our phones 
in two seconds now. So in an era when you have all the education you could ever need but will never use right in your pocket, it's sort of only natural that the focus would shift more towards entertainment. And I must say with these new attractions, they've done a phenomenal job at entertaining people. So I don't get my tidy whities in a twist about it. I've learned to just accept it. Go with the flow and try to look forward to what comes next. <laughs> Speaking of what comes next, the Festival of the Arts just ended out here and the Flower and Garden Festival has yet to begin, but the topiaries have started to appear. Awesome. Nothing's more fun than topiaries. They truly inspire the imagination. And speaking of imagination, you guys remember me talking about the no Mickey character rule when Epcot was first constructed. Well, the many people unfamiliar with Epcot's story will possibly wonder, what did they do to appeal to kids who expected to see colorful characters? Well, they solved that conundrum with one little spark of inspiration that lied at the heart of the creation of a pavilion dedicated to imagine. Nation. Imagineers Tony Baxter and Steve Kirk came up with a creative idea for two original characters to inhabit this new pavilion and teach kids all about imagination. Thus the Dream Finder, a sort of bearded, steampunk, purple wearing wizard of sorts, and more importantly, his little buddy Figment, the figment of imagination, came into being and became part of Epcot lore forever. They were part of a ride in this pavilion called Journey Into Imagination that opened in 1983, the original of which was far, far different than what's here today. And it was sponsored by Kodak, who also owned the 3D, which was very impressive back then, Magic Eye Theater back over here, featuring that old school original show, Magic Journeys. Oh yes. That's where the phrase Magic Journeys comes from. Now, of course, today the Dream Finder is long gone. He went the way of Kodak and Magic Journeys. And they ripped out the original Journey into Imagination ride, even scrubbing out Figment for two years. Between 1999 and 2001, there was no Figment. The ride became Journey into Your Imagination, featuring Dr. Nigel Channing. But everybody hated it. It just wasn't right to have a Figment-free Epcot. And so they found a way to bring him back by retooling the new ride and working Figment into it. Which is why today the ride is called Journey into Imagination with Figment. Just to make sure everybody knew that everybody's favorite little imaginary purple almost dragon was back to stay. And even though a lot of people still absolutely can't stand this newer version of the ride, and everybody who remembers the old version is constantly going on and on about it, Figment today is more popular than he ever was, and we can still visit him in the Imagination Institute. As you can see, Dr. Nigel Channing is still in this ride, and it's still very much the Y2K version, but Figment comes in in a sort of series of interruptions to our tour of the Imagination Institute. Who is this? It's Figment! At least he's in here at all, though. That's the important thing. Of course, the old Y2K era ride is still here, and some people find that to be a little bit of a stinkeroo. And there are constantly rumors of them upgrading this attraction, but I'll believe that when I see it. Right this way, everybody! You're turning this entire open house up Upside down. Upside down. Now you're talking. That's the best idea you've ever done. Oh, the grand finale's coming up. What better way to fix the figment free ride than by changing the finale to go figment crazy? Imagination is a blast. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at all those figments of your imagination. How many figments can you fit in this ride? The sky's the limit. Figment overload. Oh, and then the very best part of all, the creepy moon of your nightmares. Thanks, Eric Idol. We'll never forget you now. Ah, well, it's all over. Or maybe it never began. Maybe it was all just a figment of our imaginations. They've updated the exit to this ride a few times. The image works area where you're supposed to let your imagination be set free with interactive games and creative things to do. But again, of course, modern technology has kind of ruined the sort of thrust of this area. And things are starting to become more and more filled with characters and meet and greets from other Disney properties. Because I don't need Figment to give me a tech expo or show me the latest game. I've probably got that right on the phone. And cool wacky shades 
shapes and colorful lighting effects don't have the impact they once did when gamer kids have those projectors and light up keyboards and TikTok inspired LEDs all over their room. It just makes sense that things would change in here. Oh well, at least it appears that from now on, Figment is permanently entrenched here in Epcot. I don't think they'll ever dare try to remove him completely ever again. He's just too lovable. They say nothing's impossible with imagination, except imagining an Epcot without Figment. As for the Dreamfinder, well, he is still AWOL, and where they once had Dreamfinder and Figment meet and greets, you can now, ironically, Meet Mickey Mouse. Well, no Mickey Mouse meet and greet for us at Epcon today. I'm planning on catching up with Mickey a little later on. In fact, I'm also starting to get hungry as I think about that, because we're going to try to see Mickey Mouse and get some grub at another park. But don't worry, we're not quite done with Epcot yet. We're going to leave the area formerly known as Future World and head off into the rest of the world in the World Showcase. You know, when a figment is an unlikely survivor, then so is our next attraction, our next ride. Over yonder in the World Showcase, which as many of you know, is made up of 11 different pavilions representing 11 different countries around the world including some we've spent quite a bit of time in lately, like Norway, we just rode the Frozen Ride, or France, where we just rode Ratatouille. But one country I've had to pass by in each of the last episodes, to my regret, has been Mexico. And inside this Mayan and Aztec-inspired pyramid is an epic boat ride attraction themed all around Mexico's history. Once called El Rio del Tiempo, the River of Time, because it was purely sort of a boat trip through Mexico's past and present. Presence, a highlight tour of the country, if you will, featuring no characters other than the colorful characters from Mexico in the ride, like the people of Mexico. Later, though, this ride became the very first attraction at Epcot to be upgraded and rethemed to include Disney characters from a pre existing show in the form of Donald Duck and his buddies. The three caballeros. That all happened in 2007, but there's still a lot of the old ride in this, and it's still a wonderful tour of Mexico, even if it has been sort of spruced up to include the sick three caballeros animatronics at the end. Okay, so why do I see this as a survivor, even if the ride was changed to include Panchito and Donald? I see it as a survivor, because that was all the way back in 2007. And this Grand Fiesta Tour version of the ride has survived for 16 years. I am shocked that they didn't immediately reskin it and turn the whole thing into a Coco ride. I mean, after all, up here, they did already skin it a little with a little Coco Ofrenda display in here. The fact that it's still sort of a tour through Mexico at all, and not just a ride about the story of Coco, which is a very popular movie, by the way. That is a shock indeed. All right, I am really getting hungry now, which means you've got to start making it the rest of the way around the world before they put me on the ofrenda because I died of starvation. Man, I love being at Walt Disney World, even though this time I was completely unprepared for it. Today especially, for the first time ever, I actually forgot my sunglasses in the hotel room today. I had to buy these $10 Mickey sunglasses at Walmart, which aren't bad because any sunglasses are better than no sunglasses out here. I also had to buy a pair of scissors to cut the sleeves off this particular jacket here. It had actually been so long since I'd been out here to Disney World. All my shorts and Florida stuff have completely worn out. And last time I was here a couple of weeks ago, it was still pretty darn wintry, but now it's getting up into the 80s. It's getting super sticky and moist out here. It's been starting to get awfully Florida-y. The arms had to be freed. Spring jacket has prematurely become summer jacket. That's okay, I got another couple of jackets just like this at home. Of course, now I am going to get sunburned because these are the whitest my arms have been for years and years and years. That's okay, a little melanoma never hurt nobody. Oh, look at this. Good fortune gifts. What would be really good fortune for me right now would be finding some stinking sunscreen, I'll tell you what. Oh my gosh, look at that down there. There's a photo pass photographer. People keep taking their pictures in front of this temple over here. Don't they know there's a photo spot right nearby? I mean, this is a pretty good picture, but it's definitely not the perfect picture. If you want the perfect picture, you've got to look for these signs. See, look, photo spot. This is it. Now watch this. We're going to get the perfect picture. The perfect picture. Here it is. Come on in. Yes, fun pic! Put that in your Chinese pipe and smoke it. Ha <laughs> ha! 
What? You know, I never thought I'd make it over to France in my life, so never say never. Matter of fact, truth be told, I never thought I'd ever make it to Disney World. Klaus, is that you? Helga? But odds are, I might never make it to the real Germany or Italy. Nobody's ever invited me over there. And unlike some people I know, to be perfectly frank, this job hasn't been very lucrative for me, uh, especially considering the many disasters we've had in recent years, custody cases and medical bills and surgeries. So my point is, I have no way of knowing whether I'll ever make it to Italy or Japan even, which would be a pretty cool place to visit. And so I love Epcot because it brings like these facsimile versions of famous monuments or places from around the world here to us in America. It lets you experience something you might not experience any other way. Although I do hope to get to Japan one day. I just need a native born Japanese interpreter and guide for the thing I've always wanted to do there, I can't really tell you about. Let's just say I've just avoided it because I don't just want to go and do Disney parks. I'm a lot more fascinated by Japanese history and culture than just that. Oh, speaking of Japanese stuff. I noticed something funny about the Mitsukoshi store the other day over here. Which, by the way, dates all the way back to 1673 and then became the first westernized store in Japan. I just noticed the other day. They still have a ton of Super Mario stuff over here. They are your primary person purveyors of Mario plushies in Orlando right now still. That is, of course, until Super Nintendo World opens up at the new Epic Universe Park that Universal is building. It's funny, just coming from filming the California version, then coming into Disney World seeing Mario, like, ah! You ever think you'd see Attack on Titan stuff? in a Disney theme park. Just goes to show you, never can tell. What's gonna end up in one of these pavilions? Oh my gosh, I actually forgot. Another recent thing over here. The first time since COVID, the Akoya Pearls stand has reopened here just about a week ago. And you can now, once again, select your clam and they will cut out the pearl. They will figure out what size it is and then celebrate with you. Sayonara, Japan. I now have to be moving on to Morocco, where I happen to know I can always get the red Powerade. Ha ha ha. Staying hydrated is important, kids. Especially with my heart condition. Plus all the spices I could ever need. Or maybe all the money I could ever need, too. Let's see. Ah, come on, need a trip to Rome. Darn it, no genie. Looks like just genie plus. I still have not figured out what the deal is with these signs here in Morocco. But I for some reason just want one. And they actually sell them sometimes in that store and in the back in the Brass Bazaar sometimes, which has unfortunately gone from more of a bazaar to more of a seating area and bar. Oh man. First Genie Plus and now this. Will the chain packing never end? I'm really glad we got to capture the way that Epcot used to be in some of our old episodes. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn saying that I'm a little bit disappointed that some of the wondery, wandery theming stuff has disappeared. After all, we started off by me telling you about changes that I like and I thought were cool, or that I at least understand anyway. So I've got to be honest about changes I don't think make sense, and I don't think that one makes sense at all. The good news is I see a lot of hope. The next phase of Disney Park stuff might take things back in the right direction. A little bit more customer-based and experience over constant product pushing hope. I hope. Anyway, time to say au revoir to Epcot, because we've got another park to visit. I have got to get me some lunch. Time for me to head out of the International Gateway, as the back exit of Epcot is known, and hitch a ride on a friendship boat all the way to our next park, Disney's Hollywood Studios. Suppose we also could have taken the Skyliner over from Epcot, or as I prefer to call them, the Sky Bucket. But it wasn't really on today's bucket list. All right, we just did Rise of the Resistance the other day. And Rock and Roller Coaster before it closed for refurbishment. Now it's time to switch things up and hit the things I missed. Starting with the sort of signature marquee attraction now. The attraction that is literally on the marquee. Up ahead on the Chinese theater. I'm talking about the main mouse himself. And his main squeeze, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Ring. Railway. Which we now have in California, Disneyland, in Toontown. I just filmed the opening of that ride. And of course, this version replaced the once great, great movie ride. One of the coolest attractions of all time. Boy, it's too bad that one had to go. At least I enjoy this new ride. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to enjoy this new ride right now. I'm not going to enjoy anything until I get some food. Ooh, look. What? 
That's where they've got Chapek. They put him on ice. Time to head into another old survivor, the old Backlot Express. If you ever want to know what it actually looks like backstage at a movie studio, come to the Backlot Express. It's a pretty accurate representation. It's not all glamorous. It is a business after all. Show business, movie industry. I do miss the stuff from Roger Rabbit, like the weasel's car out here and stuff. Where'd that ever go to? You know what else is missing? The good chicken strips here. They do have these gluten-free quote-unquote nuggets. These are the bad ones. Still better than nothing. And I'm so hungry at this point, it matters the least that it's ever mattered. Ugh, I can't face Mickey on an empty stomach. Whew. This is gonna hit the spot, and at least they have Coke Zero. Ah, oh, okay. That was good. Now maybe a nice, relaxing time. Going out to the movies. Wow, look at this. Staffing shortages have gotten so bad. Donald's doing all the fumigating himself. Look at him, he's working hard, whoa! <laughs> you deserve lemonade, Donald. Lemonade! And look at that. Daisy is doing all the watering. Well, when she's not mugging for the camera. Ah, uh, look at this, somebody's sleeping at the Chinese theater. Just like real Hollywood. Now I know we've been on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway here at Hollywood Studios together many times before, but I'm interested in heading back inside now after the Anaheim Toontown version has opened just to get sort of a mental refresher on how different these two cues, the two lines, really are. I like this ride. I think it's pretty fun. I wish they had used the classic Mickey, the real Mickey, instead of the sort of dirty Ren and Stimpy Mickey. But I just like Mickey Mouse in general, so I'll take it. To be fair, not that anyone was asking me, but, you know, <laughs> for what it's worth. All right, time to head in. See, this is very cool. Very cool that they've recreated the Chinese theater here. The thing is, they did that for the great movie ride, which if you never had the chance to ride on that ride, was a whole hodgepodge of scenes, different scenes, which if you never had a chance to enjoy that ride, there was a whole bunch of scenes from various classic Hollywood movies, things like Mary Poppins, Casablanca, Wizard of Oz, and lots of things that were awesome, but not necessarily Disney, like the movie Alien was represented in there, gangster movies, western movies, so there was a whole bunch of, you know, riding into all different kinds of films. So the recreation of Grauman's Chinese Theater made sense. It was like you were walking into an actual movie theater to see a movie. Oh, and see a movie you did, or two, or three or 10. Now with the Mickey and Minnie's magical.com slash town URL railway coming in, it's cool that they saved the Chinese theater interior, but it means that in Toontown, where they got to purpose build the El Capitoon theater, they were able to go full Mickey Mouse with it. All these different props from Mickey's whole career and different Mickey films. And I'm not gonna lie, you wouldn't think that it would matter, like what the line is like, but it did enhance the ride experience. This cue just makes me think of the great movie ride and what we're missing. It's fantastically done and really is what the Chinese theater in Hollywood is like. But it's just pretty skimpily themed when it comes to the ride, to the Mickey theme of the ride. I didn't even really want a ride. I just wanted to refresh on the queue, but you know what? When in Rome, as long as we're here, we might as well enjoy ourselves. Wow, here we are in the screening room. Time for that film to begin. Oh no, they just announced Mickey and Minnie's Magical Railway Town URL.com slash fun might be closing down. Alrighty, my friends, at this moment, start getting out recovery, and once we do that, you'll be exiting through the doors right behind us. Weird. When I said that I didn't really want to ride it, I was being hyperbolic. I was actually hoping to ride it. It was supposed to be a figure of speech. Dang it. What are we gonna do for our grand finale then? Darn it. Sorry for the build-up and the tease there. I really thought we were gonna ride. I guess like all those struggling actors, Hollywood Boulevard has let us down. How Ever. Let's not forget, Mickey's not the only game in town. When Hollywood Boulevard fails you, head for Sunset. Sunset Boulevard never let anyone down, right? Right? Pretty sure that's right. Well, just to be safe, you know what? Forget it. Let's just try to get some rest and check into a nice hotel. Hmm, this one looks suitably large, like they might have vacancy here. I don't know if this establishment is quality enough for me, but... We might just drop in, check it out. Dude, it is crazy to think this is America's only Tower of Terror now. The one that was in California at Disney's California Adventures has been transformed into their Guardians of the Galaxy ride. So there's no more haunted hotel to check into at home. However, here in Florida, the original Tower of Terror survives. Actually, 
in Paris, at Disneyland Paris, or technically its sister park, the Walt Disney Studios Park next door, they still have Tower of Terror. Theirs is a clone of the old California version, which is different and I think a little bit inferior to the original here. And by the way, this original Tower of Terror ride here at Hollywood Studios is where they filmed the little Tower of Terror movie that most of you have probably never heard of. Starring, among others, a young Kirsten Dunst, Steve Gutenberg, and Melora Harden. That's Jan from The Office for you office heads. Yep, they use this very hotel, they say, to film that tale. I don't blame you if you never heard of it. I never heard of it either. I never knew it existed. It was released on ABC in 1997 as part of a wonderful world of Disney thing. I think it repeated on the Disney Channel, maybe. Oh, seriously, most people I know never knew there was a Tower of Terror movie. It had nothing to do with the Twilight Zone. That really didn't come into it. It was more about the story of the Hollywood Tower Hotel. About the story of the Hollywood Tower Hotel and its inhabitants. Maybe not the most Oscar-worthy film ever, but if you can get it on DVD for five bucks like I did, it's, uh, it's worth a minute of your time if you're a fan of the ride. Especially because it makes this ride a filming location. Spoiler alert for those of you who didn't know that want to come here and do filming locations, though. They did build sets that sort of match this, so it wasn't all filmed here, not even most. There were definitely some classic lobby shots, and you can see why they wanted to incorporate the actual ride into the filming of that movie. Because the actual ride, the lobby anyway, looks pretty freaking dope. Do the kids say dope anymore? I know they do. Radical. I'm gonna head up to the desk here and check in. That's never the bad part. The bad part is that with my budget, they never send me up to check into a room. They always send me down to the boiler room. They know it's all I can afford. Uh-oh, look at this. The directory has lost some letters. They must have fallen down. Oh no. He's trying to send us a message. Well, luckily they at least give me library privileges. And every once in a while, they even let me watch television in here. I heard there's a good show on tonight. Just crossing over into the Twilight Zone. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Thanks for the television. Bye. Well, that's over. Now we have to use the service elevator. Guess we're all servants now. Well, could be worse. Last time they made me sleep in this boiler room. This Tower of Terror is better because your ride vehicle actually moves forward into the tower before, uh, you know, doing what it does. I actually haven't been on the Walt Disney World version for quite a long time, so sort of looking forward to this. All right, gang. Time for us to climb aboard our elevator. Our elevator to the Twilight Zone. makes sense for California, I guess. I mean, you're already in California. Why have California-themed rides? That was the whole problem with DCA in the first place. Yada, yada, yada. Plus, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy is pretty fun. It keeps bouncing up and down, up and down. It's a fun ride. But I will always love the classic Tower of Terror. Look at this. I love this little area over here. Look at all of these props. 
What is this, maintenance? Lost and found? Not 100% sure which, but I like staring at all the doodads. Zippity-doodad. Anyway, time to head out to the lower lobby over here. Ooh, sumptuous. I always wonder if this guest book behind the counter is a real book. And if you can sign it. I would like to sign it, please. If someone could arrange that, I would enjoy it. I've signed some other secret books at Walt Disney World I can't tell you about, so. Every once in a while, someone gives me a sick opportunity. Although sometimes I feel like I'm the cute girl at the, at the prom alone. Not that I'm cute, just in the sense that everybody always thinks I have awesome hookups for things, and most of the time I don't. Like when I rode Tron ride the other day. That's the first time any cast member has ever invited me to a cast preview. And after that, a whole bunch of my cast member friends were like, Oh, I, I never knew you'd want to be in I always thought you had a hookup. Well, it is what it is. Look at these little relics of the past. This must be just the remaining stock of what's left. I love these things. I've got this one for Allie, and I've got the Hitchhiking Ghost one. But I don't have this or this. That is my favorite. Look at that. Tiny little Geppetto putting the finishing touches on Pinocchio. Okay, looks like the sun has pretty much gone down out here now. Which means it's time for me to think about getting out of here soon. I have a dinner reservation with some friends for just after the park closes over here at Hollywood Studios. And luckily, the dinner's actually very close to Hollywood Studios. So what's the problem, you might ask? The problem is that the overpriced rental car is in the Epcot lot. Remember, all the way back in in Dory? Luckily, like I said earlier, Rock and Roller Coaster is closed, so that can't tempt me aboard. But I feel incomplete now that we didn't ride Mickey after that big build-up. And it's still down for the count. They did it on purpose. They're mad because I said the new version's line is better. They didn't want the truth. They couldn't handle the truth. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get a chance to come back one more time before I have to fly back to Southern California. Especially while we still have the luxury of these lightning lanes here. As we've run out of time for Mickey, and for Slinky Dog. I don't mind so much about Mickey because we've got that ride at home now and it's not that different. I was really craving a ride on Slinky Dog. You know what though? If we hurry back through Epcot, we might get a chance. I'd be able to do another pretty cool ride. Another one that's a little bit of a rarity. By the way, dude, how freaking sick does Hollywood Studios look at night? And yet, it always closes so early. I feel like all the parks should always be open until at least 11. And Magic Kingdom, 1 a.m. At least on the weekends and stuff. Remember those days? No extra ticket, no special event. Remember the days when because all the other parks would close sort of early, they would always keep Magic Kingdom open till midnight or one in the morning? Dude, that is when you felt the magic at Disney World. When you were there till 1 a.m., almost everyone had gone home. You could really take your time. I'm glad we captured so many magical moments in previous episodes of Random Land, like 2015 through now. But some of the things we've seen and done back in the day, I don't think you'll ever see come again. All right, bye-bye, Hollywood Studios. Even though you look more beautiful now than ever because of all this neon. I gotta get the heck out of here. This is one of those times where uh, everything I thought was gonna happen today went slightly sideways and got slightly out of control. So even though I know I should probably tell you you've done your duty and you can go home and sleep well right now over here, just in case we get a chance to get on that other ride at Epcot, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna meet you over there. Oh, you never know what's gonna happen on Random Land. Plus, the thing is, this was a super unexpected last minute trip where I was invited to appear two weeks after I had gone home from here, actually. And we've got all this cool access to lightning lanes this week. And so this trip's been a little, you know, random and ride heavy. No time to get into history or secrets or all the hotel room stuff like I like. So there's always a lot more to do in the future. At every trip, I feel like we have to do it all right now. But that's a rookie mistake. Life isn't about doing it all. It's about being present in the moment and being grateful for what we do get to do. I never thought I'd even get to come to this place. And each time I come back, I feel like it's the last time that I have to do everything. And sometimes that stops me from just enjoying where I am, honestly. I have been in bad relationships and flat broke and living in abject poverty and working at jobs that I hated and everything else. I still managed to find happiness in the times where I could stop, count my blessings, think my way through it, try and be present and enjoy the little things. And there have been times where I've been in some of the coolest places in the world, like Disney World or the city of Paris after leaving a friend's dinner in a five-star restaurant. I've been completely miserable. So 
Attitude isn't everything, but it is something. And I have learned the hard way that you cannot control your circumstances, but you can sometimes control your reaction to them. And that that can literally change everything in the world. That's the quest for positivity, my friends. Trying to see the world in a better light, no matter what the circumstances are. It's not easy, but if you can get the hang of it, it's worth it. All right, even though we've done it uh, quite a few times in the past week, I was gonna try to hop on Guardians of the Galaxy with you guys one last time. Unfortunately, continuing our Mickey luck, it's down right now. I know, you can hear someone crying in the background about it. So I guess this is where we have to say goodbye, right here on the shore of the World Showcase Lagoon. But don't worry, I think we're gonna have at least one more adventure from Walt Disney World. And keep your eyes on the other channel that sometimes vlog is back. Give me a personal favor, for real. Subscribe or make sure you're still subscribed. Check out those links in the description. There's a reason everybody asks for that. I try not to ask for it up front or over and over throughout the videos, but it would mean a lot to me if you just clicked around, took a look at the merch or the Patreon or the Facebook group even. If you wanna know more about the Quest for Positivity, there's a lot of people in there who could direct you to other videos and stuff. And of course, the second channel. We're bringing those off the cuff, unedited vlogs back. And remember, we have more than a thousand, well over a thousand episodes on this channel and the other channel of Disney parks in France, in Florida, in California. Secrets, ride throughs, old rides the way they used to be. So, although this adventure is ending, we have many others for you to check out right now if you have time. All right, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thanks for listening to my spiel. Because you've listened to it, you've done your duty. You can go home and sleep well. And don't worry, we'll be back at Disney World again. all this coal they have to shovel into the boilers that's what I was doing on my flight here my ticket was that low class I had to help shovel <laughs> these are the jokes kid <laughs> First time you ever kissed a mouse. <laughs> this mouse, yes. Ah. Ah. Get me Walter Scott. <laughs>